nursing management during the postpartum period. The postpartum period is a time of major adjustments and adaptations, not just for the mother, but for all members of the family. It is during this time that the parenting starts and a relationship with the newborn begins. A positive, loving relationship between parents and their newborn promotes the emotional well-being of all. The relationship endures and has a profound effect on the child's growth and development. Once an infant is born, each system in the mother's body takes several weeks to return to its non-pregnancy state. The physiological changes in women during this postpartum period are dramatic. In addition to physical assessment and care of the woman in the postpartum period, strong social support is vital to help her integrate the baby into the family. Comprehensive nursing assessment begins within an hour after the woman gives birth and continues through discharge. This postpartum assessment includes vital signs and physical and psychosocial assessments. It also includes assessing the parents and the other family members, such as siblings and grandparents, for attachment and bonding with the newborn. One of the risk factors of giving birth is contracting a postpartum infection. The risk factors for postpartum infection increases if the patient has had an operative procedure, a history of diabetes, a prolonged labor lasting more than 24 hours, the use of indwelling urinary catheters, anemia, multiple vaginal examinations during labor, a prolonged rupture of membranes lasting more than 24 hours, a manual extraction of the placenta, or if the patient has a compromised immune system or is HIV positive. Other postpartum danger signs are as follows, having a fever over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, a foul-smelling lochia or an unexpected change in color or amount of vaginal discharge, large blood clots or bleeding that saturates a peri pad within an hour, severe headaches or blurred vision, visual changes including blurred vision, spots, or headaches calf pain, which increases with dorsiflexion of the foot, swelling, redness, or discharge at a site of episiotomy, epidural, or abdominal sites, dysuria, burning, or incomplete emptying of the bladder, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing without exertion, depression, or extreme mood swings. Typically, the new mother's temperature during the first 24 hours postpartum is within the normal range. Some women experience a slight fever, up to 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, during the first 24 hours. This elevation may be the result of dehydration because of the loss of fluid during labor. The temperature should be normal after 24 hours with the replacement of fluids lost during labor and birth. A temperature above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit at any time or an abnormal temperature after the first 24 hours may indicate an infection and should be reported to your physician. An elevated temperature may identify maternal sepsis. The pulse rate of the postpartum woman should be between 40 and 80 beats per minute. This rate is low and is called purpureal bradycardia. Tachycardia in the postpartum woman can suggest anxiety, excitement, fatigue, pain, excessive blood loss, or delayed hemorrhage, infection, or an underlying cardiac problem. Respiratory rates in the postpartum woman should be within the normal range, which is between 16 and 20 breaths per minute. Any change in respiratory rate out of the normal range might indicate pulmonary edemia, atelectasis, a side effect of epidural anesthesia, or a pulmonary embolism. Immediately after childbirth, the blood pressure should remain the same as it was during labor. An increase in blood pressure could indicate gestational hypertension, whereas a decrease in blood pressure could indicate shock or orthostatic hypotension or dehydration, or maybe a side effect of epidural epidural anesthesia. The goal of pain management is to have the woman's pain scale rated between 0 to 2 on a scale of 0 to 10. Severe pain in the perineal region may indicate a hematoma. Considerable diuresis, as much as 3,000 milliliters, begins within 12 hours after childbirth and continues for several days. 
However, many postpartum women may not sense the need to void even if the bladder is full. Spontaneous bowel movements may not occur for two to three days after giving birth because of a decrease in muscle tone in the intestines as a result of elevated progesterone levels. Normal patterns of bowel movement usually return within a week after giving birth. Several postpartum exercises are recommended. One of these is abdominal breathing. While lying on a flat surface, floor, or bed, take a deep breath through the nose and expand your abdomen muscles. They will rise up from the midsection. Then, slowly exhale and tighten your abdomen muscles for 3 to 5 seconds. Repeat this several times a day. Another exercise is the head lift. Lie on a flat surface with knees flexed and feet flat on the surface. Lift your head off the flat surface and tuck it into your chest. Hold it for 3 to 5 seconds. Relax your head and return to the starting position. Repeat this several times. Modified sit-ups. Lie on a flat surface and raise your head and shoulders about 6 to 8 inches so that your outstretched hands reach your knees. Keep your waist on the flat surface. Slowly return to the starting position. Repeat, increasing in frequency as your comfort level allows. Another exercise is the double knee roll. Lie flat on a surface with your knees bent while keeping your shoulders flat. Slowly roll your knees to your right side and touch the flat surface. Roll your knees back over your body to the left side until they touch the opposite side of the flat surface. Return to the starting position on your back and rest. Repeat several times. There's also a pelvic tilt exercise. Lie on your back on a flat surface with your knees bent and your arms at your side. Slowly contract your abdominal muscles while lifting your pelvis up toward the ceiling. Hold for three to five seconds and slowly return to your starting position. Repeat several times. 50% of all Paris women develop some degree of pelvic prolapse in their lifetime that is associated with stress incontinence. Stress incontinence can occur with any activity that causes an increase in intra-abdominal pressure. Postpartum women might consider low-impact activities such as walking, biking, swimming, or low-impact aerobics so they can resume physical activity while strengthening the pelvic floor. Suggestions to prevent stress incontinence are as follows. Start a regular program of Kegel exercises after childbirth. Lose weight if necessary. Obesity is associated with stress incontinence. Avoid smoking and limit intake of alcohol and caffeinated beverages, which may irritate the bladder. Adjust fluid intake to produce a 24-hourly urine output of between 1,000 and 2,000 milliliters. And use either an intravaginal or intrauterine device that puts pressure onto the urethra so the urethra will not leak when under bladder pressure. Nutritional recommendations for the postpartum woman include the following. Eat a wide variety of foods with high nutrient density. Eat meals that require little or no preparation. Avoid high-fat fast foods. Drink plenty of fluids daily, at least 2,500 milliliters, or 84 ounces. Avoid fad diets and harmful substances such as alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. Avoid excessive intake of fat, salt, sugar, or caffeine. Eat the recommended daily servings from each food group. The serving recommendations for the lactating woman from the Food Guide Pyramid are as follows. Eat four servings of fruits a day, four servings of vegetables, four to five servings of milk, bread, cereal, and pasta should be 12 or more servings daily, seven servings of meat, poultry, fish, or eggs, and five servings of fats, oils, or sweet. The breastfeeding mother's nutrition needs are higher than they were during pregnancy. The mother's diet and nutritional status will influence the quality and quantity of breast milk. To meet the needs for milk production, a woman's nutritional needs increase as follows. The woman's daily calories should increase by 500 calories per day for the first and second six months of lactation. The mother should increase protein intake by 20 grams per day, adding an extra two cups of skim milk. Increased calcium intake is recommended at an increase of an additional 400 milligrams daily, which is equivalent to the consumption of four or more servings of milk. It is recommended that the lactating mother drink an additional two to three quarts of fluids daily in the form of milk, juice, or water, but not sodas. The postpartum period is typically a happy yet stressful time because the birth of an infant is accompanied by enormous physical, social, and emotional changes. 
The postpartum woman may report feelings of emotional lability, such as crying one minute and laughing the next. Postpartum blues are transient, emotional disturbances that begin in the first week after childbirth and are characterized by anxiety, irritability, insomnia, crying, loss of appetite, and sadness. These symptoms typically begin three to four days after childbirth and usually resolve by day eight. Postpartum blues are thought to affect up to 75% of all new mothers. This condition is the mildest form of emotional disturbances associated with childbearing. The mother maintains contact with reality consistently, and symptoms tend to resolve themselves spontaneously without therapy within one to two weeks. Any emotional changes that are more severe should be reported immediately to your doctor. Thank you for watching.